What's going on, golf world, golf universe, golf land? We are back. It's season two, episode one of Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. I feel like uh, we had a we at the top of the mountain now. We got a sponsor, but we know we can't be too complacent because at the top of every mountain, you know, you're at the bottom of the next. So I mean, we still got to give you great highlights. Oop, not highlights. We got to give you great uh, dialogue, great uh, conversation, diverse perspective coming from a different clubhouse. I am joined by my co-host, my co-homie. Doug Smith, a.k.a. Douglas Fresh, probably be the godfather of all my kids. And I am Will Lowry. <laughs> we got a lot to unpack this episode. Uh, for example, Tiger Woods. Nope, we don't have any new news. He's not playing. But he isn't getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, the World Golf Hall of Fame, that is. And uh, we had special guests that came by and spoke with us. Uh, he dropped a lot of keys. I mean, dropped a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff that we can use for our uh, patent pin for all you social media goers out there. Uh, Travis Miller, head of PGA Memes. That's a great conversation. Please listen in on that one. We're also going to talk about Phil Mickelson. Did he ruin his legacy? I don't know. Remains to be seen. But first and foremost, Doug, before I shoot you, uh, before I shoot to, shoot it to you, I got to tell you, man, I am so proud of you. Those of you may not may not who may or may not know that Doug was. Uh, part of uh, the NBC coverage of the APGA Tour uh, at Torrey Pines, I want to say maybe about a month, month and a half ago. And uh, he was uh, part of a broadcasting team. He was one of four. They had uh, Jock Slade, Damon Hack, Nota Begay. All those guys are cool. I love them. But my man, my, my, my partner in crime was on the ones and twos. He, he navigated our ears and our eyes on the, on the, uh, on the ground, and he, he got us to, uh, to, to what was happening out there. And I got to say, man, I'm so proud of you, man, because I was getting phone calls from all across the country, man, man about about, you know, how well of a job you did. And, you know, you know, we, we're talking about growing a game. Right. And, you know, Doug, you grew the game during that during that weekend. You grew the game. And, you know, they say that you, know, you can't be what you don't see. And that right there, bro, was a prime example of sparking. Uh, 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 a kid's eye, somebody's eye to be in what you, what they just saw on television. So I want to say kudos to you, praises to you. I appreciate here, that, Here are man. your flowers, bro. I appreciate that, man. I mean, it's crazy. You you came with the idea for Beyond the Fairway a year ago, and, and you doing things on Golf Channel. I'm out here doing, you know, broadcasts for PGA Tour Live as well as, you know, other events on Golf Channel. Man, I appreciate that, man. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy year, man. But it's good to be back. I feel like this is home, Will. Like, Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. Let me say that one more time. Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. Let's, man, look. We started this, Will. When you pitched this idea, I didn't know if anybody would buy in. But guess what? Genesis did. They said, hey, these boys got some, they, they're valid. Let's go ahead and give them some cheese. And look, we appreciate that. All I want to know is when my car shows up. You know, when, it, when am I going to get one of these, you know, these GV80s? You know, that's all I need so I can, you know, do my thing, man. But, no, Will, how you been, man? I feel like we, it's been a whirlwind this year so far for both of us, man. How, how you been and what's, what's life like? Absolutely, man. We've been on we've been on a hiatus. I think, uh, you know, obviously <laughs> with you working at uh, PJ Tour Live and, and I've been doing a lot of stuff with PJ Tour Originals. And, you know, we got a got another project, a show popped off and. And we're yep. in, you know, episode one of that. And also we did some Golf Now uh, tidbits that was directed by your wife. Tidbits? We did a mini series, man. Okay, mini, mini okay, man, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tease it. <laughs> it's so bigger than go, tidbits. Well, I'm trying to, hold on, I'm trying to tease it so everybody can go look for it. Now, don't, don't right, take my right. tidbit away. Fair. All right. Just all right, stay sound perfect. small. It, I don't like sounds, it. <laughs> sounds small. However, it was, uh, you know, directed and produced by your wife. So we got to give her her kudos and her, and her uh, credit for what she did for us. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing having one Smith, you know, um, yell at me, which is you. But I don't know, man, having two Smiths yell at me in, in, in one segment. That's that all was, your fault. That, that's, that's your fault. I'm putting that on you. You you know, you try to bring the family in and then that's what you get. You know, my wife is a stickler for perfection when it comes to all things uh, production and podcasts and media. So you, you, you got... What you asked for. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> y'all should have seen my wife checking Will. She she told, <laughs> man, we doing a shoot one time, y'all. And she told Will, open your mouth wider when you speak. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and, and ever since then, I have been like this. So when I speak, so I can enunciate my words. That boy yeah. ain't shut up since. <laughs> that boy ain't shut up since. He's over here, why a wide trout mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but speaking of like Genesis, you're just mentioning you know, do you think Tiger Woods is entering into the World Golf Hall of Fame? 
and hopefully it'd be ideal if he pulling up in a Genesis. Where, where, where the claps at? <laughs> I mean, this, I mean, this man has this man has has a, a career that has spanned over what two two decades, two and a half decades, Three. maybe three decades, and um, you know, I mean, all the stuff that he's done for the game. I mean, PJ Tour probably wouldn't have been where it is right now if it wasn't for Tiger Woods. I mean, Kevin so, Knott said he made us rich. You know he, what I'm he saying? Made, he, he made us he rich. Made us rich. Shout he, out he, to Kevin Knott. But but the thing about it though, you know, if if it wasn't for Tiger, Doug, do you think that we'd probably be? Um, I mean, shit. I had to say, man, his, his, his him being around the tour was a trickle effect. You think we'd be right here if it wasn't for Tiger? Hell yeah, we'd be right here for what Tiger. What are you talking about, man? Get out of here, cuz. Got talent out here. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a vague statement, but you know what? There's a, there's some merit to that. I think Tiger grew the game amongst the burst communities. Uh, you know, when we talked to like Alex Thomas last season and, and various other celebrities, everybody got in the game around '97. So uh, people that are enjoying the game, a lot of you know blacks and brown folk out there. You know, they, when they saw Tiger get that dub at the 97 Masters, man, they really was like, okay, all right, let me go try this golf thing. You know, he got the red on with the black. So they went and got their Nike fits. They got all kinds of matching, you know, Tiger regalia. And, um, yeah, I think I, I think we'd be here without Tiger. I'm going to say that honestly. But I will say this. I don't think golf would be where it is for us to talk about in, in a magnetic way like we do without T-Dub. And, and I'm glad he's getting his flowers, man. There's, yes, there are there other people that could have been inducted to the Hall of Fame. But, look, guy's got 85 wins. He's got 15 majors. I mean, he's going to get in at some point. Might as well put him in now. Right. Absolutely. And, and think about it, you know, I – I, I hope the fact that since he's coming back, it may spark, or since he's going into the Hall of Fame, it may spark the notion that he may want to play one or two more seasons. I hope. I don't know. That remains to be seen. Um, but he, but ain't fit- playing, he ain't playing this week. I'll tell you what, <laughs> golf's fifth major, the, the Players' Championship. Man, I'm already in Jacksonville right now. I'm already here getting ready for this tramp championship. Well, I'm excited, man. Look, my favorite tournament of the year. I used to drive down from FAMU. I used to take I-10 all the way to Jacksonville and the Ponte Vedra, you know, in college. I, I, I've I've been on this property 30 times, never played the golf course, though. But That's a damn shame. Sorry. It is a damn shame. So, hey, somebody hook me up, man. Let me know something. I mean, we got Genesis out here now. Can I get, can we get on, you know what I'm saying, Sawgrass? Can I play the stadium court? I don't know. Somebody well, I, I don't know. I don't know if Genesis got connection to have you playing, but they definitely give you a ride. Well, let me call I, Billy Horsell. Billy, I, hell you at? <laughs> <laughs> the hell's <right>. Billy at? <laughs> hey, uh, so, you know, one of the guys that's been in the news as of late who has taken, uh, received a lot of attention, got Phil Mickelson. You know, I mean, we're not going to go in too much in depth on, uh, you know, his, his, I guess, his comments, his antics over the past <laughs> couple uh, weeks. But Why not? We can get I, into some stuff. I, I'm, okay. Well, okay. I mean, I was, I was I trying like... to keep it light. I don't want to hit everybody with, you know, so much, you know. Uh, hey, we back. Let's you know, remind he... them what we do, cuz. <laughs> heck no, we I mean, back. I guess it is golf talk from a different clubhouse. So, I guess. Damn uh, right it is. So, you think you think Phil messed up his legacy? I mean, is he is he still the faint? I mean, is he still... You know, acknowledged by the the the, the audience, the, the the fans that as one of the best ever do it, or has he hurt that that particular that particular side of his uh, image? Oh man, that's a great question. I think um, you know what what what's done in the dark always comes to the light. I think we all need to remember that as we go on about our lives. And Phil, you know, made some comments to Alan Shipnook, and and, and Shipnook, you know, he, he ran with those comments. And you know, it's one thing to say. Um, something derogatory or negative it's another thing to say it out in public and problem with phil is he was part of the architecture group behind uh live golf and in the and the you know the, the whatever the golf league is called i don't even want to mention it I don't even mention the golf name we're just gonna call it live golf you know what i'm saying sgl we're just gonna call it live anyway partial architect so he's playing both sides man you know and so when his words came out people understood what was happening look it kind of hit me like damn phil you was you know you you kind of self-sabotage yourself you know you, you play both sides against each other and People found out how you really felt about that, about you know the, the the Saudis as well as the PGA Tour, and now you don't have a place to play. So Phil's ass is out here chilling somewhere, laying low as hell, and, and he don't want no smoke. My question is, Will, we're gonna see him at the PGA Championship? Is he gonna get to defend his championship? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. you know, it, that's the, that's the thing. You know, I mean, how how low is he gonna go? I mean, he, he's like the um, one of the PGA of America initiatives. You know, he's trying to find a place to play. You know. <laughs> I've been waiting to get that off for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, you know, you got but, it out. I'm, I got I'm it out. <laughs> <laughs> Bing. <laughs> but, you know, when you think about, like, you know, him speaking on the human rights, I think I think he, he sparked a lot of people's um, notion to maybe delve into 
the findings of PJ Tour policies. You know, we I, it, it, he made us think a little bit that how the PJ Tour move when it comes relation to their players and contractors versus being employed. But I think when he, you know, kind of neglected the, the human rights violations, I think that's kind of where it kind of went downhill for him. So uh, right now, man, we just hope we pray that he comes back eventually. He's not even injured. I mean, I don't know if I'm praying that he come back because he's not injured. So uh, <laughs> just come back, bro. Just come back for the, this. I know your tail is tucked between your legs. Tuck. I, I, it's, I, I, it's past tuck. His tail is <laughs> in his chin, boy. He got that thing by his chin. What you talking about? <laughs> but just just come on back, man, and uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started because we uh, we do miss the the, the character and, and the personality of, of Phil Mickelson for sure. But uh, all right, man. So we got to get on to our next guest, Doug. You want to go and bring him in? Because this, uh, this is uh, I know this is what you do. Oh man, look, you guys. Most of us follow PGA memes. Eight hundred and twelve thousand followers across the golf space. Look, I am excited to bring in here Travis Miller. You know what? Let me do it right. It's time to go beyond the fairway. With PGA memes very own Travis Miller. Beyond the fairway podcast is very very excited. I'm gonna tell you why. Because. You see him already. Travis Miller is in here with us, founder of PGA Meme. Trav, what's happening, dude? Dude, just uh, grinding, trying to, you know, create the dream, make it happen, you know, just having fun. So thanks for having me. So, I mean, mean, you got a lot of, you know, entities that's going on that concerns, you know, you. What is fun to you? Like, your job is fun. What do you do outside of the job that's not, that could possibly be not fun? Well, right now I'm living, eating and breathing golf and content. So it's, but it's, I'm finally doing something that I love that I'm passionate about. And I'm, I've surrounded myself around people that I enjoy and it just makes life a lot more simple. You know, before that, like you're doing a job that maybe you don't really love too much. And so you go to bed frustrated, like not looking forward to the next day. And I haven't quite had that moment yet in golf. So I'm pretty happy with where we're at. So. All right. So let's rewind. Let's rewind. Try. Let's get back to the beginning of it. So it's 2018, you know, you're just getting into the game of golf about that time. Correct. Just on, on this side of it. Yes. Yeah. So I'd started this playing. Side yeah. I'd started playing years before that and got really into it. And that's what made me want to do this. It was just like, I saw this little opening in golf content to have fun and bring parody satire, satire to it. And I just stepped through a little crack and open the window and here I am. So, uh, you know, speaking of like a crack, you know, you stepping through the crack, but where you step from is, is so amazing to me. You know, you were once you, you were leading in the industry in the smart home industry. You were in a smart home industry. So it makes me want to have another conversation. I think my home is dumb as hell right now, <laughs> but I mean, you were one of the top 20 executives you know, in, in the country, you know, and, and especially recognized by one of the top 20 executives under at the, under the age of 40, you know, what were some of the skill sets that you got from that early endeavor and what, and how did you apply that to make your brand so successful? You know, I got lucky. I started, um, I started doing door to door sales, uh, at a young age and was super successful. I was always able to just go up and talk to anybody and avoid those like awkward moments during the sales process. And, push the right button. So I was, I was one of the most successful salespeople in my organization and quickly turned it into starting a company with some friends. Uh, I had a, a friends who, a dad who just retired from Delta airlines and was looking to start a company. And fortunately for me, I was part of that. And through that, it was just like leadership skills. I learned a lot of that through sports being like the captain of the football team and, and a pitcher in baseball. I was always kind of the leader out on the field. And so it helped me translate that into business and, become a good leader. And I've always just kind of thought like, how can I break the mold? How can I break the barrier and try to push the envelope with, uh, you know, new content or new ideas, new strategies. And I was able to do that because I got recruited when this company that I found with some friends, um, ended up kind of turning into a bigger commercial entity. I did not want to do that. I did not want to do like commercial security. Home, home security, smart homes is not sexy at all. (laughs) You take that to the commercial side, it is, boring and I definitely would not have been passionate about it. So I kind of started seeking opportunities elsewhere, maybe start my own company doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got recruited by corporate America to come to Dallas and work at Brinks Home Security, which is one of the biggest alarm companies. And they're like, listen, we don't have any entrepreneurial minded people here. We just have corporate people who tell people what to do, but they've never walked the walk. And they're like, hey, you've started this company. We were at the time top five one of the top five large ADT dealers in the country. So we were pretty good size. And they were like, how can you come in and like work with all our partners 
and help them grow and teach them new strategies. And it was like easy for me because we had, we'd already kind of done that. And now it was just like putting my blueprint together or the playbook in front of these companies and helping them execute. And we had a hell of a time and it got me really into golf because there was a lot of like yeah, whining and well, dining. There was yeah. a lot of client golf. And I realized my baseball swing certainly didn't translate to, to <laughs> golf quickly. And a lot of these guys had a lot of money, so they'd like to wager. I mean, I'm talking 20 plus handicaps wagering hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. Like you guys would clean up out there with these guys, but like just had so much fun. I saw what golf really was to the, like the average amateur, right? It was like, there was a lot of just like shit talk. There was a lot of good fun banter back and forth. There was betting, there was, you know, drinking, there was just, and you left just having fun with your buddies. And I learned a lot of just like that humor of the side of golf. And then you watch it on TV, it's just completely different, right? Like these guys are yeah. unbelievably talented. It's so like serious all the time and you don't get to know these guys' personalities. And no. So yeah, that's where I was. I was like, man, I think there's something fun we can do in golf and kind of bring this amateur life thing to the forefront, but just incorporate the pros and have some fun and challenge them and their personalities a little bit. And the golf so world you, really liked it. So. so you went from setting up alarms to setting off alarms because I know <laughs> now when a PGA Tour player or people in the industry see that PGA memes has posted them with, with a satire or satirical uh, uh, caption, everybody's kind of like, damn it, Trav. Like, so look, so <laughs> corporate world got that checked off. So let's talk about how you transitioned, how you utilized uh, the social media platforms and Instagram and, and YouTube. What, what started PGA memes um, what, what was the strategy or was there a strategy? You were just th kind of throwing stuff into the ether. So I had started a page before PJ memes called, uh, his lot, which was, uh, the snake is, is like Damn. a fake snake <laughs> scaring people and stuff. And it was really funny. And like, I got talked into doing it. I was like, I didn't really have social media and they're like, Hey, these videos are so great. Like you should, we should create a page and, and post these reactions and see what the, the world thinks. And it blew up a, a lot of athletes like NFL guys and NBA guys started doing it. Um, and it was really fun to see, but it was kind of the same thing over and over again and lost its luster. And you got copied. PG. You got copied with yeah. this a lot. Like other people started yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. There's people <laughs> doing it. And honestly, it was good because it was user generated content. You know, it was like right. the easiest thing in the world, right? People are submitting their own videos and, I was like, oh, this is, this is easy. But with PJ memes, I'm like, all right, I saw this opportunity, but I didn't really have a strategy right at the gate. I was like, this could be just for fun. And I was at a time where timing is everything in life, I think. And, mm -hmm. and for me, Bars. I was at a point where I was really at the tail end of this like alarm career where I wasn't really loving it. I, w I felt like I was at the ceiling of where I could be in it because I was a vice president of sales. I did not want to become like a CEO or anything of these companies like it. I did not, I saw those jobs. I worked for the CEO. It, it was not a job I wanted to have. Um, and I just, I'm like, okay, what if I did this? What if I turn this into a media company where it was built on satire and parody? We built this thing up. We didn't put the cart before the horse. So we built a following. We, we, we create a brand and yep. we build this relationship with some of these players and some of the brands within golf. And from there, there's going to be, um, you know, a following of people, both uh, consumers and brands that want to be a part of it, that can work through stuff with us. And it's what's interesting. I've learned a lot. Um, some of the stuff I dealt with on the security side, working with like creators um, when we did advertising. But when you get an enormous amount of impressions or eyeballs on something you do, you can sell branding and advertising space. And a lot of people do it the wrong way. And what I've been trying to do from the onslaught, and I'm certainly getting better at now is finding very creative ways to work with brands and people to where we can integrate their product or their KPIs for what they have for the year into what we're doing content wise See, and really making it a win-win for me and them, but also really for the consumer, right? Just to find the right stuff that can be appealing to them, brands that they like. Um, we work with new brands that are just starting out, giving them an opportunity to really come out into the golf space and, and make a mark, or even just like household names that have been around forever and just want to get more exposure and eyeballs out there, you know, and it's a, it's a new way, new way of marketing. And it's, uh, it's fun. It's easy, but it's, it's getting a, a tremendous reach today. And, and I, and I find that interesting. You know, when you say KPIs, key performance indicators, which is so, you know, important when it comes to the social media space, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, Doug know when, when it, when this game started and this, the social media 
transformation started, people came out the block hot. You know, people came out with 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 crazy engagement, the blue check, a lot of a lot of followers. And what I noticed is that those guys that we we once envied, they fizzled out, right? Yeah. And pretty much where we are right now is a new set of influence that are on the way. Now, how long they will be around, we don't know. But how much of your how much does being innovative consume your thought process on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I mean, we know that culture and social media is forever changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, honestly, I've been around a lot of uh, creators or influencers. I would never consider myself an influencer. Like, I'm I'm not an influencer. I'm 38 year old dude. Like, you know, like this is not me. I'm usually kind of just hey, use my brand or my page to amplify your message or your product. But um, I've been in front of the camera a little more lately. But what's funny that I've seen, and I would love to. I always tell people this when I get the chance to talk to them kind of one on one, but be be you're fortunate and be happy with the opportunity that you have. I mean, Instagram is not owned by me, right? It could get deleted tomorrow and I don't have that anymore. Um, the experiences and the opportunities I have, if you told me five years ago that I would have those, I would laugh at your face and be like, there's no mm -hmm. way like, wow, that would be incredible. Like, are you serious? Like, you know, and, and for me, it's it's all about opportunities that you seize and you nurture because you're going to have, uh, you have this golf industry that's small. You think it's this big world, but it's a very small industry. Very. Uh, you know, I have burned some bridges making fun of some people and I've been able to, <laughs> I've been able to mend some of those bridges over time. Um, but I always want to try to nurture relationships and give more. I mean, I've seen so many creators think their value is so much higher than it really is and that there's nobody else out there that can do what they do. And the reality of it is, is you should always cease to over deliver and maybe under promise over deliver, give a, give a company a mulligan for using golf terms or something like that. If you do something with them <laughs> on a strategy side that doesn't work, show them that you're, you're agile and that you'll give them an opportunity to improve and figure it out. But you should always try to listen to the brand, but also in, interject your thoughts of like how your audience may react to it. So you can help them create something that is going to actually work. Because for me, I don't want to take this as a cash grab. When I started this and built this brand, I want this to be a business and I want everybody to win and I want people to repeat doing business with, with me or anyone else that I'm affiliated with. And there's too many creators out there that think too short term and they're thinking about quick money and they hear stories of what like, oh, Paige Sporanic or this person made all this money yeah. doing this. So I'm entitled to that or I should get the same and, and do very little for it. And it's just. I've never operated that way. I, I think or a lot chase of creators followers. sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah or, yeah, or chase followers. And honestly, like, believe me, I'd love to have as many followers as possible. Um, but sometimes at the end of the day, that's not what matters. I mean, if you have 20,000 followers, but 18,000 of them love you and are highly engaged in what you do, that's way more, that's a better percentage than I have. You know, there's a lot of people who follow PJ memes that probably don't even see my posts anymore. You know, like, they don't they're not engaged or you know whatever the reason well, is but sorry what was the uh what was the um the early win or the early kpi that you saw early on in this endeavor that kind of you know gave you the confidence to keep building like what was the one specific win or the confidence saw? to quit the job to do this right. full time <laughs> that 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 too right <laughs> yeah i um i had some wins on content site early on where like it blew up and so the the following growing and then like the amount of pro golfers reaching out to me their spouses, the caddies, um, news outlets. I was like, okay, wow, like this is this is being talked about or it's heard about, which was pretty cool to see. Like, this isn't just something that you know is in my small community of friends or people at work that we could laugh about something. You know, like like your normal social media post, maybe on like a private page. So I was like, okay, this has opportunity, this has legs. And then I went about a year in, built the following up, and. I had a couple ads that I did, but they were, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of like, <laughs> this was fun. And, uh, and a couple things popped up where I'm like, hey, I can pay my car payment doing this. Or, hey, now my car payment and my insurance and now my groceries. It's like, this is pretty cool, you know? And I was, I was doing really well in my career. So it wasn't like I needed the money right away, but I was like, this is something cool where I can um, keep building on. But I, I finally put together a strategy. I sat down and said, all right, if I would put together some shows or some, uh, series or something like that, what would they be and how would I want to do them? And I put together this first one and it was called on the T. Um, I just relaunched it on YouTube, but originally it aired on Instagram TV 
And I was talking to the team at Mizzen in Maine, which is a local company yeah. here in Dallas. They were working with Phil Cl Mickelson. That's a clothing and, brand, right? That's the clothing brand. Yep, yeah, it's a clothing brand. Um, they have more golf stuff now, but back back then it was mainly about like dress shirts and dress pants and so forth. Mm -hmm. But they were really into what we were doing. They lo they loved the size of the page and the impressions we got. So I went down and I pitched them a deal. Like it was a pretty decent five figure deal, um, and I pitched them on an idea that hadn't even come to life yet. And I got a yes like right when I was done speaking. Yeah, let me get that. And Sign that check. Perfect. Yeah, and I was like, did I ask for too little? Like, what did I, you know? Yes, you but did. But it was the, it was the uh, <laughs> amount. It was an amount that I felt comfortable with, and it was the biggest amount that I had made, um, despite you know, by far at that point. And so I was like, I came home and I'm like, wow. I'm like, this now it's time this to is, execute this and is make this thing happen. And I did, and it went really well. We got a bunch of tremendous guests on that first run of show, and. And I was like, okay, here we go. I need to put a better strategy together and think two years down the road of how I can build this and be smart because I didn't need, I guess the position I was in, you guys, that a lot of creators, I think, uh, find themselves not is they might not have a job like I had where I was kind of running on good. Yeah. control. Yeah, you were good. So I could build this golf company simultaneously and I didn't have to worry about like making the quick buck. Um, Whereas if I didn't have my job, I would have needed to make money to put food on the table and provide, right? And like, so I, I had that opportunity, which I'm really fortunate about. I think if you if you didn't have that, you could obviously substitute with like investors. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to to own this 100% myself and That's have to do that. So it's it's been crazy ride. But like that was the moment when I left that Mizzen and May meeting. I was like, okay, like. My, you got something. Like, I got something. Yeah, we yeah, got like, it here. <laughs> I was like, I think this is we're on to something here, and like the rest is history. Like we've just been building it slowly, but, you know, day by day, and going from there. But what's crazy to me is somehow you turned using the PGA initials into a partnership with the PGA Tour. How the hell? Do you make fun? I guess it's your sales background, Jesus, because you went from making fun of the tour and the guys to now them being a part of what you're doing. Like, what? How did that happen? And and how do you now kind of tightrope the line where it's like, you know, you might want to say some crazy stuff about X player, but now you can't really do that <laughs> because of the tour. Yeah. But so how's that been? Well, so I don't have any partnership with the tour, but we, we're trying to be friends. Like we're trying to keep each other at arm's length. You know, and like, yeah, because, you know, they certainly aren't too friendly with me or make things easy. Um, and they, you know, and I'm sure I don't make their life easy sometimes, too. But I've gotten a lot nicer, a little bit easier to work with because I, I definitely I don't want to create any enemies. Like at the end of the day, I have a heart and I'm a, I'm, I feel like I'm a good person. But there are things like I, Patrick Reed, I've destroyed Patrick Reed over and over and over and over and over again. And I met him in October for the first time. And. It was a interesting meeting. I mean, he killed me. He, he killed me with kindness. He was he was like, "Hey, you're that guy, huh?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." And I told him, I said, "Hey, listen, I've got, I've crossed the line with you 100. percent I'm like, I'm sorry. I go and and I go, I've crossed the line with a couple other guys, and I go and I shouldn't do that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there's things that you've done on the course that are just. Like they caught, like it, it's, I have to do it. It's my job. You know, I have right. to make fun. I have to. You're making it easy for me. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. Hey, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And I go, yeah. And listen, I'm like, I promise, like, I'm not going to cross the line again. But if you do something stupid on the course, like uh, you're going to hear from me, you know? And I, and I go, so you got to get him though. Woods, and you so got to get him. Fowler. Yeah. You, you got to get him. Patrick yeah. Reed. Anytime he takes a relief, you got to get him. He might be my yeah. favorite Uber driver story for another day, <laughs> but you got to get him. No, Patrick, yeah. gave, he gave me a ride to the course at uh, at Rocket Mortgage last year. I was stranded, and he was driving by and picked me up. So I got I yeah. got good right. vibes. So look, hold on. In that vein, and I know Will's going to have a follow up to this. How did that? So when the PGA Tour announced the kind of player impact performance PIP and all this kind of stuff, how did that work out for you? You know, it's it's been beneficial because I think the players are like, hey there's an opportunity now for me to seize this and become more popular or do things on social media. And it was good timing because I had just started to launch this home course series where we're gonna go into their homes and give a little behind the scenes, um, look into their lives and their homes and what they have. And um, I wanna to talk to you about that too, for sure, because there's some questions that I got. Okay, yeah, no, it was, it was cool, good timing, but I think the frustration these players have though is that it's not very transparent. The PIP, um, you know, there's a few players that I could get into this a little bit, but there's a few players that like I'll represent now because I have a 
a media company in addition to PGA memes where we'll work with some of the guys on their content and some of them are popular guys and they're like, we don't even know where we stood. Like there was no communication whatsoever. Um, you know, if, if you knew the top 10 made money, if I was 14th place, do you, don't you think that it would be nice to have like a standings to see like, hey, you're 14th place. If you just push the needle a little bit more, or you do something, you know, you can get into the eighth or ninth spot and make a million bucks. But there's no communication. Even after the uh, stuff is awarded, no one knows who won what. So it's it's a little disappointing. I think the tour is, is taking that stance on it. But it definitely opened the door, I think, for players to think differently about creating yeah. content. Um, you- and And... It's like Barstool, for instance. Like, I don't think a lot of people out of the gate wanted to go and do content with Barstool or Dave Portnoy and some of those guys. Like, yeah. a few years ago, like I think they were still kind of in that area where people were like figuring. They're in that it gray out. space. It's like, yeah. who are you? Who are yeah, you? What are y'all right. doing? What are you about? Like, yeah, yeah. No, and now everybody is like Barstool. I mean, and Dave's done incredible things. Like, the Barstool Fund was an amazing thing that he did last year. I mean, he's eating pizza. Incredible. He's doing pizza reviews. This guy. Yeah, Come on. He, that guy is living the life. But Absolutely. Like, <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like they're so big now, it's like you can't avoid them, right? Like right. you no, have yeah. to do stuff with them. Like even and, Tom Brady's of the world are doing stuff with Barstool Sports. Man, Im- impressions is is currency. I mean, it's just it, it's just that simple. But it's funny that, you know, you're speaking on, you know, how to come up with uh, some type of strategy, uh, I guess, in a way for the PGA Tour in a backdoor way. But there's a huge difference between being in marketing and being a brand strategist. Right. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. a lot of people understand that. And so what you're I mean, you're pretty much a damn brand strategist. No I question. Mean, in, a, in the grand yeah. scheme of things. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So it's they like they'll they'll hire like they won't hire me, but a brand will hire me, like a title sponsor to a PGA tournament. They'll hire me to come to the tournament. And we have all these amazing concept ideas that we want to do with the players. And it's on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when there's not even a broadcast happening. No one even sees what's going on. It's a practice round. And the PGA tour will squash it and they won't even let the the content see the light of day or even let it happen for that matter. And the players get frustrated because they're like, well, hey, yeah, of course like they're excited. This, they're, I mean, I have relationships with a lot of these guys now and they're like, hey, you're here. That's cool. What are we doing this week? And the last time I had that opportunity, like I'm like nothing. I'm like the like they won't let me do anything. So I'm going to go and feature the fan zone and let the uh, the audience know what it's like. So when they come here on Thursday, they can take their kids or whatever. But I can't do any content with you because it's against the rules, you know, and it's 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 just silliness because at the end of the day, I think it helps their broadcasting. I think it helps the PGA Tour to have good, wholesome content with the players, have some fun, showcase their personalities. And I like home course, I had some reviews that came through this morning. I've been watching them closely. It's like, hey, I love watching these because now I, I see these players in a different light and it makes me want to follow them in the tournaments that they play and root for them where I never did before. And like, yeah. that's an unreal statement. You know, if I could get a thousand new followers to Jason Day or a, a, not followers, fans, yeah. like that's a significant amount. You know, that's it, a lot no of people. Question. And that, that movement grows over time, especially if Jason wins a tournament or comes near close to winning one or whatever it is. But like, that's the kind of impact I want to have when it comes to working with the players. Like I that's see a lot of, uh, I, I feel a lot of gratitude with that um, in the sense of, there's nothing to, like to monetize there. It's just really like, hey, I like these guys. I've built some relationships with them. If I can help them build their personal brand and their their audience, like that's a huge win for me too. Yeah. Hey, hey Travis, you know you have this uh, the 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 Cribs show. It was my version coming up as MTV Cribs, right? This is yeah. a, this yeah. is a golf version, and I I just got to ask this question, man. Give me your background and all the houses you've been to. Who uh, guys are on the PJ Tour, big influencers. You can be honest right here and be on a fairway. Who crib is the dumbest, according, according to the smart <laughs> the smart home industry? The dumbest, <laughs> dumbest, huh? Who has oh, who wow. has who has who has a dumb crib according to the smart home industry? <laughs> well, they all they all had security systems, so that was good. That was the first step. Yeah, that's the first the thing list. you still look at. That's the first thing you look at, right? right? Okay, no, you this, got is it, not, right. this is not Brinks. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think they all did a pretty good job. I mean, they all had security. They all had cameras, so they were doing pretty good with themselves. But I'd say Jason Day had the smartest house. I mean, when it came to all the nooks and crannies and things that he had, that guy had it pretty hooked up for sure. So okay. All right, I, mean, I, just make, I, just want, I just want to make sure I'm not going to plan a robbery there. Just, 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 let, just let you know. I, 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 I'll tell you Last what, Trav. I, I, I kind of stumbled upon the, the home course probably, a, what, a month ago maybe? I want to mm-hmm. say five, six weeks ago. And so Jason lives in Westerville, Ohio. And, um, you know, I've had, you can see his house from the road. You can see it. Like, it's not 
it's not a hidden place. But yeah. I want to talk about your reaction when you saw what he had in the backyard because that his facility, his personal use facility, and and we'll maybe throw some pictures up here is unbelievable, and he can hit every shot under the sun from about one what fifty and in. So how was that just? Yeah. Like, how was that aha moment? Because that was crazy to me. So I, Jason and I have kind of become friends back to 2019. I was kind of talking with Ellie a little bit more. And then Jason and I met at the US Open at Pebble. And I got invited that next year to go to his um, his uh, foundation event, Brighter's Day yeah. and uh, Brighter. Brighter Days Foundation. And so I've gone there now a couple of years, but this this last time he tapped me on the shoulder and he's like, hey man, afterwards, um, a few people are gonna come to the house. I'd love for you to come by. And I already had my ticket punch to go home and I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna change my flight. I'm Not many days I'm gonna get offered to go to Jason Day's house, so here I go. Um, so we head over there and um, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never heard of his backyard or anything, What's you know, what it all looked like. <laughs> and so when I parked my car, I was with a few of my buddies. I was with uh, Ryan Rustan, Coach Rusty, and then Bryce Butler, former NFL player. And we were all just like, what is this? Like, this is incredible, <laughs> man. Like, 165-yard par three, and he's got this nine-hole putting green, four bunkers from different sand across the world, like top courses. I mean – stupid and then his golf barn is like every man's dream of like a man cave type of deal and and he's just the most humble guy ever like walking yeah. around just showing everybody giving giving putting lessons chipping lessons out there like to that's everybody crazy. that's dumb. byron scott was out there the old coach of the lakers it was it was cool man that was and, a vibe like, you had a whole situation oh, out there <laughs> oh it was dude it was a great night and i honestly i had uh i had home course plotted out for the first season i had like five or six episodes lined up Jason Day was not on that list. And <laughs> I was like, Ohio, like, I'm not going to have Jason Day as our house in Ohio. Like, I didn't even think twice about it. I was thinking about homes on the water. I was thinking about maybe some homes up in the mountains, like some cool stuff that was just, you know, Ohio wasn't in my, in my, my picture. You so grow, you can grow grass in Ohio, Travis. Yeah. And I, and there's, <laughs> there's some snow there, you know, I'm like, no mountains. I'm like, nah, Ohio's not it. But when we walked in his backyard, I'm like, Hey, do you want to be on this new show that I'm launching? It was like, he's like, I don't know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's see. And then we worked it out. And then um, I've been doing more and more stuff with Jason, but we locked it in and he was the first episode and That's I couldn't dope. have been happier with how it turned out. So That's super dope, man. So Trav, as we prepare to get you out of here, question for you. One, what is coming up? for you i mean you've got all these different angles you're 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 at events you're in people's houses you got the social media popping like what's next what are you working on that you can share yeah so uh home course is is going to come uh, even in a bigger way here soon we've got some of the top players in the world lined up and even some of like the legends in golf lined up that we're going to be traveling not only just uh domestically but internationally to some really cool places to shoot some good shows so we got more That's of that coming and you know honestly the window I see open to is that I don't think there's a lot of really good made for TV content in the golf space right now. I thought Golf Channel had some really great shows that aren't around right now. And easy I, I, now, I, easy trap, yeah, easy I, I wanna, try to mess I up our bag, man. Like, I'm not talking behind the fairway, beyond the fairway, boys. I'm just saying, like, there were some shows out there that I was like, man, I used to live to watch those stuff, you know? So it's like. Big Break for yeah, one, like, Will. Yeah, those were good shows, you know? Those were great shows. I love Big Break. So at the end of the day, like, I want to create content that is like a reality TV, like show format, 20 plus minute long stuff. And that's what this YouTube channel is gonna turn into. So I'm actually uh, shooting a new show, I'm breaking, uh, we're shooting the first the first uh, scenes on Sunday, and it's gonna be taking people around uh, the world at different golf clubs and kind of giving you behind the scenes look. Uh, some of the clubs, some of them are prestigious that you've heard about, some of them are kind of like hidden gems. Um, but we're going to be doing that and it's going to have a little bit of that home course vibe, but it's going to be more on the golf course side, That's what's working up. with uh, a variety of people that make those golf courses pop. So, but you know what, you know what, you know what I did, we do, I had to interrupt you just a second, you know, me and Doug, we jumped the gun just a bit. Now, if you want to present some, including us, we're not going to stop you by, by no means. So I, I do, I do want to retract that statement on behalf of Doug and I, okay, go ahead. As, as, any, As you were. <laughs> any anytime, anytime. Honestly, oh, yeah. like I'm telling you guys, like I want to build this thing to a level where it's it's fun. And, you know, I don't need to be the biggest, but I want to have the, the best stuff out there. And and honestly, like I don't want to be in everything. That's the funny thing is I wasn't even supposed to be in home course, believe it or not. Like it was supposed to be like MTV Cribs where 
the player kind of brought you through everything. But what I learned is these golfers aren't the most personable guys. Yeah, you need to, you need and, to drag them a little. <laughs> yeah, you got to bring them around. So I, I kind of stay out of it. I want to make it more about them. But um, I definitely want to give this platform an opportunity for other creators to come in and be hosts of different shows and be hosts of Fitz Podcasts or whatever it is to give them an opportunity to create their own individual brands but help build this PGA Memes brand over time as well. So there's going to be more of that to come, I think, as well because – We'll probably have this time next year, probably six shows or so going on our YouTube channel that are going to be different, appealing to different audiences, but they're all going to be very high quality. So, see, that's not, Doug, Doug, that's not streams of income. That's rivers of income. Hey, that man. Is, I that, love it. <laughs> Trav, look, if anybody's doing dope stuff, man, and grinding, man, I, I appreciate it's you. Like, somebody right. got to do it, man. So, more power to you. The only question I have before we wrap it up and get you out of here, the only way that we know how. I need to know one thing. Of all the stuff you've done, posted, and seen, what's the one thing where you're like, damn, I might have took that shit just a little too far? <laughs> uh, smi okay, Smiley Kaufman. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. He, sorry. That's all you got to yeah. say. That's all you got to say. <laughs> yeah, or you could leave it just at the name. There was one particular post <laughs> yeah. that I included. I included his wife in it, but I wasn't making fun of his wife, but it, she was just part of the image. And that's where he popped off at me. He's like, dude, don't include my wife in this stuff. You know, blah, blah. And I was like, no, that's, that's and I was like, you're right, man. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. I took it down ASAP. And I was like, that's too far. Come on, Travis, you got to be better than that. So, and I've tried hard to be. So, yeah. All right. How, how, how are your relationship real quick? Is, are you guys on, uh, I mean, you guys okay? I don't think you're going to see him on an episode of Home Course anytime soon. So, yeah. <laughs> Travis, we got to get you out of here, man. The only way that we know how. We call it Rap Force. You're going to go play golf with four rappers and you. So there's the fifth person. I need to know who you pulling up to the course with. All right, why don't we just do the, the, the halftime show of the Super Bowl with me, Dre, Snoop, Eminem, and 50 Cent. How about that? It seems like Boom. a pretty good group. All right. I, I don't hate it. Many men. Wish death upon you. Not me, because you're the one making fun of everybody. Trav, we appreciate you, man. Always a pleasure. You always can stop by here and go beyond the fairway with Will, myself, and uh, we'll let you get to your day, man. I know you guys shit to do. <laughs> All right, boys. Hey, Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. It, it's funny. That 50 cent, man, he, he looked like a dollar. He didn't, he didn't look 50 cent anymore. <laughs> beyond the fairway is presented by Genesis Motor America and the 2022 GV80. Luxurious design meets intuitive versatility. Make the game your own. And I tell you what, Will, you talk about somebody that made the game their own. Travis Miller doing his thing at PGA Memes. But what got me, as soon as he said Smiley Kaufman, that's all you got to say to me. I'm laughing. That's hysterical. All day, every day. Smiley Kaufman, because at the end of most events, and Smiley, you cool, you my guy. You ain't smiling after most of these events you've played in. But Travis was wrong for putting your wife in that in that piece, and and, uh, and he, he regretted it. So it's nice to see that people can, like, you know, mess up and kind of grow from it, Will. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man, because I'm sure we're going to put our foot in our mouth a lot of times. I mean, Trey Valentine is still mad at us. Uh, he no, will not call. No, Trey, Trey Valentine. No, Trey Valentine won't speak to me. I, I'm liking, I'm looking like a stalker. I'm liking all his pictures on Instagram, and I can't give a heart back. I just want to like my puppy, something. Like, damn. <laughs> but regardless, uh, you know, that interview was, you know, was timely because as we get into this new uh, social media era, and you know how to you know make your company profitable you know and he he's pretty much doing that you know he had multiple streams of income and like i said those, those uh th that interview man i had my pad and pen out and there was some uh, keys that he dropped that i'm definitely going to use because i definitely have to let all seven thousand of my followers know what's going on well he went from <laughs> setting up security to needing security that's for damn sure travis Absolutely. miller we appreciate you taking the time going beyond the fairway right here golf channel nbc presented by genesis Time now for Make the Game Your Own, presented by Genesis, a new segment here on Beyond the Fairway where we are going to dive into companies and individuals who are helping to grow the game amongst all people, all communities, diverse ones, non-diverse ones. Hey, if you're helping to grow the game, we're going to talk about you right here on Beyond the Fairway. Right now, this week, we are going to highlight something that's very close to Will and I's heart. We're talking about the APGA Tour, the Advocates Professional Golf Tour, started in 2010 by a conversation with Adrian Stills and Ken Bentley, former VP of Community Relations for Nestle and now the, the chairman of the board for Farmers Insurance Open. And, Will, what these guys have been able to do is they've created a platform 
uh, where we used to play some kind of scruffy courses. Not gonna lie, I used to, we, oh, it was I, it was a lot I, of chitlin circuits I, from I love the from yesteryear. Choice, I love the choice. I love the choice of words, scruffy. <laughs> it was scru <laughs> courses needed lotion, dog. I'm trying to tell you, man. Some of them courses a ashy, we started ashy courses with Kukuya. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know when the, when, the, when the tour started, we you know they paid a lot of homage to to the Chitlin Circuits and the Charlie Sifford. So we played Rogers Park there in Tampa and Chester, Washington. I love Chester, Washington, out in L.A. Well, that's where we met and and where we've been started. You still wearing blue from that day when we met. And you know what I, I find interesting is when you stay the course. You know Ken and Adrian and, and Michael Cooper, uh, they stayed the course for so long, Will, that now in this era of golf. We're starting to see companies like Cisco, Farmers, uh, Genesis to some degree, Lexus, uh, buy into their efforts to grow the game because, hey, the mission of the APGA Tour is to create an, an avenue where minorities can hone their skills so they can one day play on the PGA Tour. And as we've come down this track, Will, now 12 years into the tour, we're, we're playing courses like Baltusrol, you know, Craig Ranch, you know, TBC Sugarloaf, playing this Sugarloaf, you know, you know World Golf Hall of Fame. I mean, there's a lot of places that that we're starting, and it's not just you know the courses that have gotten better, the competition, the attention. Absolutely. You know, the guys are getting access to to better equipment to play, and you know we've seen Kamayu yeah. Johnson, we've roasted him as well. Willie Mack, Tim O'Neill, we're seeing guys get chances and opportunities to play yeah. in the PGA Tour. It's one thing, you know, their mission was to to grow the game amongst professional golfers, but I love the fact that they're tapping into growing the game amongst uh, collegiate golfers as well. Absolutely. And so what they're doing is that they're providing a, I guess a one of a, 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 I guess a feeder system as well, because they're also going into the, the inner, inner city communities and, and, and doing an introductory level of golf. So, I mean, from the whole spectrum, we look at the whole overall golf ecosystem, man, they're trying to cover it. And I mean, those are all also definitions of, of growing the game. And, and it looks like they're out, they're also, uh, Helping these kids uh, use the game so they can grow within themselves. So that that's one of the things that man I, I'm so appreciative of APGA because you know uh, their entry fees at the time when you know we didn't have a, a pot to piss in they didn't have a lot I mean, of money. They have you, know, you could play the APGA. Man, man, I I, I had three hundred and twenty eight dollars and I it had I had no trouble trying to find the other twelve. Had no trouble trying to find other twelve, but uh you know what they're doing out there and they're growing and you know when, when I'm in you know, different rooms across the country uh, when it comes to the game of golf. I, I'm starting to see high-level execs uh, such as, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the Cisco's and, you know, waste management, all these high-level execs from across the uh, the golf landscape who are asking questions about the APGA. Absolutely. You know, APGA is on the tip of their tongue. You know, mm. APGA is in their thoughts when it when it comes to, they're, they're starting to, to assess PGA Tour. Oh, there's another tour out there called the APGA Tour. You that's know, a, and that, that's an uh, aggressive uh, statement, but uh, I appreciate that. Man, no, but there is. Like, when I'm in these rooms, you know, I, I, I don't know because I'm the black guy, like, you have to play the APGA Tour, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. But regardless, if, if that's what I have to be, I'm okay with that. But the fact that these companies are uh, are familiar and they have an understanding of what the APGA Tour is about and who they are, that means there's progress being made. Well, that is the Make the Game Your Own presented by Genesis, where we just talked about the APGA. So big shout out to Kim Bentley, Adrian Stills, Dr. Mike Cooper, and Cole Smith for all the work that you do. We appreciate it, and thank you so much for offering a place for even me and Will to play. I don't even know why you do that, but I'm appreciative of it. But hey, you know, as we prepare to get out of here, this episode, Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. Will, you want to get into to some picks for, for, the, uh, for the Players' Championship? I want to know, Will, right now, who you picking? Sergio Garcia. No, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Sergio ain't going to win anyway. We're not going to do that. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll pick. Yeah, we'll do something on social. We'll figure it out. Hey, but thank you so much for always rocking with us. We are back. Season 2, Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. Can you believe that? Sometimes I got to pinch myself. But hey, Golf Channel, NBC Sports. We out of here, baby. Holla at y'all.